Have you ever wondered how you can take the love that Jesus gives us and help other people? That's what we'll talk about today. A Christian is a mind through which Christ thinks, a heart through which Christ loves, a voice which Christ speaks, and a hand through which Christ helps. St. Augustine. Last week, we talked about the book, Not a Fan, where it talked about our love for Jesus. This week, we're going to talk about our love for other people. And can we have that radical kind of love that Jesus has for us? We're going to do it with the backdrop of the book, Love Does, by Bob Goff. If you've never read a book or have seen a TED Talk or a video of Bob Goff, He is a force of nature, just someone who thinks in such a radically different way that you wonder how you can get some of that. He just has this outlook on Jesus and living the Christian life that makes it so easy for us to realize that we could live a much different life. And in the end, when you look at the people that God chooses, We're lucky. He chooses people like us. He chooses sinners. He chooses people who didn't do so well. He chooses people who struggled to do the right thing. Moses and Abraham and Jacob. I mean, think of all of them. Even Peter and Paul and all the apostles. They were all human beings. And that's the good news of all, is Jesus wants people like us to serve him. And not because he needs us. He can do all this by himself if he wanted to, but because he wants us to be part of the plan. And he says that love is about doing. It's not just about being stationary. When we love other people, it's more than just saying, hey, I love you. And he says that we will be measured by how we love. I mean, didn't Jesus say that we will be recognized by how we love? And that we should live life to be bold. God wants us to be bold. And his analogies are so amazing. That's why I love this book. Because when Bob talks about things, he just puts the analogies in the right place. I think of one point when he was talking about us being bold. When we have a baby and a toddler and we're like, come on, you can walk, you can walk. And we're so encouraging our baby to walk because we know babies at that stage where they can walk. And we're cheering them on. A lot of times we have this very negative image of God. I want you to do better. But instead, it's more like, hey, come on. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And God is trying to encourage us to do the things he knows we're capable of. When half the time, we don't even think we're capable of it ourselves. We think we're failures, but yet we're loved by God. And he hopes, just like we would hope our baby, if our baby tried to walk for the first time and then went ploop right on his diaper because he fell over, he would get up and try again. And that's where Jesus is trying to get us. Please just try again. I am here. I'm here to catch you when you fall. We can fail at things. The idea is that we will have Jesus who is begging us, try again. Try a little bit differently. And remember, I'm always here to help you. When you look at the Bible and you look at the people, he is always doing that with people. Jonah, go to Nineveh. Nope, no thank you. Not going to Nineveh. Come on, I know you can do it. Or when we have Job being challenged in the way that he was. Joseph, how he was challenged. But God always has everybody's back. And he's encouraging them, keep going. Think about Daniel living in Babylonian exile, and there was nothing for him. There was nothing for his situation, except God was there. And God was going to walk around in the fire with him, say, you know what? This is kind of like a sauna, right? Super warm, kind of nice. But God is there with us to be with us. Bob talks about the party, you know, where nobody comes. And he tells his people, go out and find people, invite more people, invite everybody. And half the time, we don't think we should be invited. Look at all the horrible things I've done. I don't belong in God's house. 
But when everybody gets invited, sometimes it's the opposite side where we think, oh, really? That person? They're at this party? But you know what it is? God wants everybody. He just wants us to accept. He just wants us to come and be a part of him and his life and to serve other people. And when we turn down this invitation, God is going to keep inviting us. He says there's no bouncers at this party, just invitations. And last week we talked about the rich ruler who could not let go of his money. But he says it's really not about money. It's about pride. It's about the thing that you let define you that shouldn't be defining you. You shouldn't let money define you. You shouldn't let whatever it is that's controlling you. Instead, trade up and go for Jesus. Jesus is everything. And if we can let go of the thing that's holding us back, the thing that the rich ruler had, we can ask to have it all and exchange everything in our lives, the fake stuff. Instead, we're going to exchange it for Jesus, who's the real thing. We're in. We are in the special place. But sometimes we treat ministry, he says, a little bit like we're being manipulative, where we're trying to get a return on our investment. This is kind of why I wanted to do these two books together back to back. Because in a sense, the book Not a Fan and the book Love Does is two sides of the same coin. Jesus wants to love him and be a follower. Jesus wants to love other people and not just look at them as an investment, as a number, as a person I need to get in the door to prove to you that I'm a really super duper Christian because I found someone to witness to. Instead, we want to treat people with our hearts. We want to heal other people like Jesus heals us. Jesus picks us up off the ground, and he will pick those people up off the ground too. We share the word of Jesus because Jesus wants everyone to come back home. You know, I think about missing kids, and the parent just wishes the kid would come home. I don't care what you did. I don't care that you crashed the car. I don't care about anything. Please just come home. And that is what Jesus is telling us. He forgives us, and he wants the other people that we're talking to, that we're seeing in our lives and telling them about Jesus. He wants them to come home too. I mean, it's great, he says, that we can read the Bible and get to know something more. But the big deal is that we're going to act, that we want to be able to do what God says, not just read about it, learn about it, and get to be this very educated person and quote everything off the top of your head, but do nothing. And then taking those gifts we have and taking everything that we are capable of doing and using them to help the people of God. He says that he doesn't hear God. You know, some people say they hear God in like a voice or a thing, and he doesn't, but he hears God in, this is what God wants me to do. Here's my gifts and talents. How do I pair those two things up together, make a mesh together? That is the voice of God. He is telling us to use our gifts to make the world a better place and to bring Jesus first in our lives, but bring other people to Jesus, not as an investment, not as a number, but as a person that Jesus wants back. He talks about the situation where he was in a boat and he was trying to actually sail to Hawaii, which is super hard because the ocean is very big. And what he found out is that you can, using a sextant and a couple of fixed points, decide which direction to go into. Just the fixed points, you can draw that line. And that's what he's telling us. We have some fixed points. We have advisor, friends. We have our church. We have Jesus. We have the Bible. Take those fixed points and measure everything off against it. That fixed point will show you the direction you should be going. While Hawaii is really small and hard to hit in the ocean, he says that God draws a big circle, wants us to get towards him and welcome us home. He said that when he finished that boat trip and he ended up on the Hawaiian island, 
and everyone was welcoming, yay, you did it. It's nothing like what God is doing in asking us to come home and be a part of it. And then he says in the end, we don't have to make a big deal about everything. You know, so many times when we do something good, we make such a big deal about it. We don't have to do that. No one's going to get confused about who did the miracles, who brought the people back. But Jesus brings people back to him, and he wants us to be involved, but don't make a big deal about it. Don't spend time promoting yourself. It's just a waste of time. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is Luke 14, 8, and it says, English Standard Version, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit in the place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And it's kind of a funny parable. But I think that what it's getting at is that we aren't supposed to have pride. We're not supposed to be boastful. And we're supposed to let God take the proper credit for the things he does. And God knows what we did. The most important person who knows, knows what we've done and is there. But if we keep promoting ourselves, it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of time. And it gets us nowhere, and it gets everyone else nowhere. And it doesn't do any good. But instead, when we give God the credit and we just do the things and just walk away and then do the next thing and do the next right thing, that's what's important. And I found it such a great Bible passage, and I've tried to do that. I try not to promote myself, I guess. And maybe it's part of my personality as well. And I always worried that people overlook me, you know, that I don't stand out because I'm always enabling other people to succeed and then never going around saying, see what I did over there? I just trained this person and they became vice president. But when we take this thing in life where we put ourselves in the position of humility, people will notice. But the most important person of all will notice is God. And he says in the end that love assumes that it can find a way to be used. I just love that. But if we just keep moving in that direction, moving in the direction that God wants us to be in, we'll have that radical love that people will see Jesus in. He says in the end that when we have, like the last book talked about the marriage relationship, it's not going to be that our spouse remembers us because of the things we knew about them. Did you know I know your birthday and your favorite food? But instead, a relationship and a marriage is built on what people do together. And that's where it matters to Jesus, too. The relationship with Jesus is not about memorizing facts, about not lobbing Bible passages at people like a hand grenade, he says. That was so visual. But instead, we're going to make sure that we welcome people home back to Jesus and that we point to the God that is most important. You might not know a lot about Bob Goff, but he has done some amazing things. He wasn't going to get accepted into law school, but through some perseverance that is just outstanding, he did get into law school, and he used his legal degree to help people. He went to Uganda, and he helped people who had no one. He gives this other amazing story where he met a young man And the young man wanted to propose to his girlfriend on Bob's deck. And it just blew up from there. Can I have dinner, too, before I propose? I have some friends over. Can I use your boat? Maybe I can invite 50 friends. And Bob was just like, I'm going to one-up him, and I'm going to show him more love and more acceptance than he could even imagine. He's had these situations where even he had someone do that with him, this radical form of love. Because Jesus loves us, we love those other people. He was leaving high school. He was going to go to Yosemite and work. And this guy who was telling him about Jesus went with him. And he thought that was pretty amazing. And it didn't turn out very well. And the guy gave him advice and you know, it's time to go home, don't you think? And so he goes back and he found out that that guy had just been married himself. He left his wife to protect this young man who needed protection. It's radical love. 
when people wanted to do something amazing and Bob was like, no, 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 we cannot do this, suddenly it happened because love finds a way to do remarkable things. His analogy is that he bought a piece of art that was very expensive. And I guess when you buy expensive art, it comes with a second piece, a second copy of your very famous art so that you can hang the copy in your house and put the original, which is valuable, in a vault. And he's like, I bought this amazing piece of art. I'm not going to put this in the vault. Well, here's what happened. It got damaged by a rubber band. And not a lot, but a little. And he knows, and he can see it. And probably his daughter did it. And this could be a point where someone would get mad, where someone had this piece of art and now it's damaged. But he says it's like us, where Jesus loves us the way we are, with the big rubber band mark right in the middle. We're not supposed to be a piece of art that sits in a vault. We are meant to be in the world And we're going to get smudges. We're going to get dinged up. And Jesus is going to be there every time to pick us up and love us the way we are. The imagery of that art and the damage that happened to it, but still loving that painting and knowing that no matter what happens to us, God still loves us too. So again, I love this book. um, And I love everything that I've read by Bob Goff, but he is a force of nature. He's amazing to listen to. And the way he sees the world, you just wish you could grab onto that just a little bit. That's what this book is about. How can you look at the world a lot more like Bob Goff looks at the world so that we can see Jesus more clearly than ever and see the people around us and give them that radical love that Jesus gives to us first? So my challenge to you is try to do something for someone this week that you maybe would not have done. Too hard, too much time, I don't feel like doing it. And see if you can show someone else in your life a radical love that is like the love that God shows us. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Again, two interesting looks on love. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast. And if you could tell a friend, I know that a lot of people go to churches, have Bible studies. If you have someone that you could tell about this podcast, I'd appreciate it. And remember, showing people the love of God starts with small steps. 